Hola, mi nombre es César Herrera. Bienvenido a mi canal de YouTube. Y si es la primera vez que pasas por aquí, te invito a que te suscribas porque cada semana voy a estar compartiendo un nuevo contenido que te va a ayudar a edificar tu fe. En esta ocasión es un video un poco diferente a lo que usualmente subo a este canal y es una entrevista que tuve la oportunidad de hacerle al Dr. Dean Rackey en uno de los entrenamientos que recibimos a algunos de los pastores y líderes empresarios también de la ciudad de Reading, Pensilvania, hace unos meses atrás. El Dr. Rackey, si no sabes quién es, es una persona que tiene una larga trayectoria en el mundo empresarial aquí en los Estados Unidos y también a nivel pastoral entrenando líderes, pastores de diferentes congregaciones, mega iglesias inclusive y el doctor Radke se enfoca en un mensaje que ayuda a capacitar líderes y equipos. El doctor Radke ha creado varios sistemas los cuales pueden ponerse en implementación en tu organización o en tu iglesia que te van a ayudar a ver las cosas desde un punto de vista el cual te va a ayudar a aumentar tu productividad como ministro y va a evitar que te gastes en el trayecto. Así que al final de los dos días de entrenamiento tuve la oportunidad de acercarme al Dr. Radke y hacerle tres preguntas las cuales él me pudo responder muy amablemente y quiero compartir contigo estas tres respuestas que te van a ayudar a encaminarte mejor en tu organización. La primera pregunta dice así. You don't want to work alone. Working alone has a few benefits. Survival isn't one of them, nor is productivity, nor is discipleship. How do you disciple people when you're, when you're working alone? But you must build a team. And the question is, well, how do you do that? Well, you do that by finding people that have your heart and are willing and believe in your vision. You have to fight for your vision and you need people that will be like Aaron and her, come alongside of you, hold up your hands and fight for the vision. So you, you want fighters, you want people, you know, from the, in the right sense. I mean, they're going to, they're going to work the principles, the methods, the processes of this scriptural system that God has been teaching us. And they will be your teammates who will, who will be in relationship with you. Organizations move at the speed of relationships. And these people will have your heart and they will go for the vision. They will take the vision and run with it on your behalf. But you got to give them an opportunity. You got to give them a chance to contribute to the building of the vision. Or there, it can't be about dictatorial, uh, just telling people what to do. Uh, you want them to be able to participate and, and express their own wisdom, their own understanding and counsel and knowledge to be involved in building the kingdom in your midst. La segunda pregunta dice así. Well, retention has to do, God sends people to the doors of the church. The average church in this nation keeps 10 to 15% of the people God sends to their door, which is a terrible statistic. What's even worse is that the average pastor, I, in fact, in 22 years of, since I founded the Institute, well, pastors have not known what their assimilation rate is or what their retention rate is, whatever you call it, discipleship rate, retention rate, but they don't even know what that number is. And everything starts with the facts. Proverbs tells us it all starts with the facts. Pay any price to get the facts. And so you, you couldn't set a goal to, to, to improve the retention until you understand what your number is today. What, what percentage of people that God sends to your door are you retaining? And when you, when you have that information, then you can set goals. And then you can get a team, you build a team, You don't try to figure it out yourself. You're leaning then on your own understanding, but you build a team so that the team can come up with ideas, apt answers, timely words, as Proverbs tells us, and the team will give you suggestions. You still make the final decision. You then give the direction, but you're going to go to God, pray about it, and use the wisdom that you've, been, that you've gleaned from a multitude of counsel And take that to God instead of going in a vacuum, you go with information, facts, wisdom, and then God will direct your steps. La tercera pregunta dice así. I, I think the biggest challenge was to never compromise on God. And for God to get me to the point now where I can, I have a position of significance. I'm able to help people have the most important job in the world, helping people live and, and walk with Christ and then learn how to work with Christ, to build his kingdom, perpetuate, perpetuate the succession plan of Christ. Christ built the greatest succession plan ever. He did it in only three years. 
So this system is based on how he did it and how we can build an organization in very quickly, very efficiently, and to have lasting impact. So we, we can bequeath to future generations the reason for our existence. So the biggest challenge is, to, is for me to help people understand the value of this scriptural system that changes everything for them. It gives them a quality of life, allows them to have intimacy with God, the supernatural to occur in their midst, and for them to uh, help build God's people to be, become all that they were created to be and all they were ordained to be, and to uh, build the kingdom together. In, on teams, in a scriptural system that God taught me. Where the people can find your system? What's the website? They, they can go to ministryinstitute.org and they can learn more about me and they can see the product on ministryinstitute.org and they can find out how to get a hold of the scriptural system that God taught me that we've been teaching here for two days and uh, they can, that it'll change your life. It, it will change the people that have been entrusted to your care. It's an it's a invaluable system. It will allow you to have maximum intimacy with God, maximum intimacy with your family, and build a tremendous work. It's not an oxymoron to build a highly torqued performance organization and have a quality of life. Amen, amen. amen. One last question. What words do you know in Spanish? C. Si. Sí. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good word. That's a good, that was we, a one word. We say sí to the Lord. Yeah. Si este video te ha parecido útil, déjamelo saber marcando un me gusta. Y si es la primera vez que pasas por mi canal, te invito a que te suscribas, porque cada semana voy a estar subiendo un nuevo contenido que te va a ayudar a edificar tu fe en el Señor Jesucristo. Nos vemos en la próxima.